Hello people, I am Javi Kuwait, joined by Char Kirk. Hello. We're looking at another Vice video today. Now, this is about 30 minutes long. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's gonna be a cut down version because I do not feel comfortable sharing the entire reaction. I don't know if it'll get this uh, video copyright striked or whatever. Stricken? Copyright stricken? Copyright struck? struck. Whatever. So the entire thing will be available to watch on Patreon. What you're gonna see is a cut down version. Hopefully we can still maintain like the essence of the video and the reaction. And this is one I've been looking forward to doing for a very long time. The birth of Gully Rap, India's underground hip hop scene from Vice YouTube channel. I really, really hope that this is good and I hope you guys enjoy uh, the reaction uh, along with us. Before we jump into it, you guys, please, please, please hit that bell icon, excuse me, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon and both of those, all notifications, because it helps us out if you want to help us out. I mean, if you don't want to help us out, then whatever. No. It would help us out a lot if you'd hit that subscribe button and the, and the bell icon thingy so that uh, you're, Join part the of, you're part of the Koei family. Yeah. So here we go. Let's check this out. with rap in the city. It also meant that the rappers were comfortable with their identity and didn't try to make it more palatable for the masses. This is the story of that journey. So the Bombay music scene around 2006 was largely metal. Wow, Bombay interesting. at the time was a very metal city. Uh, other bands would be like terrified of coming to play because Bombay audiences were like brutal. If you were a bad band, you'd have bottles thrown at you. Wow. Girls as Pentagram <laughs> experience. So uh, you had that and you had a smaller but pretty good alt rock and like a little bit of a punk scene as well happening. I mean, I guess the first, first like real rapper India had was Baba Sergal. On my 13th birthday, uh, my mom and dad gifted me this CD player. It was a Sony bronze uh, CD player. And um, I called up my friend, I asked him, bring whatever CDs you have. So he brought me this Billboard chart hits. One song stuck with me that is Hated, and, Hated or Love It by the 50 Cent and The Game and then I would come across this movie called 8 Mile and uh, that basically changed my life. During that time it was like, uh, you know, YouTube was not really a big deal, you know, the views and, and what numbers matter right now never really used to matter. People used to exchange songs using Bluetooth. One of the most important like events it had stuffed in animals in the background, right? Was, <laughs> I, I didn't uh, know Insignia this. rap battle, which is like a, a, a text battling community on Orkut where people would basically uh, Put up competing well, uh, uh, competing rhymes and uh, try and battle with each other. There was one group called Insignia which used to host rap battles at the time. And just seeing that after 8 Mile is like a head rush. It's like, I want to do this right now. I'm going to battle everybody. Fuck everyone. A lot of the crews that are still around, a lot of the producers and rappers that are still around built up their reputation and kind of came together uh, on Insignia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the rooftop sunset cypher. Some of the sickest, illest, dopest MCs of our generation. Swadesi, Bombay local, elsewhere, dogs, Amy Way, Amy Meese, and Seven Buntai, and none other than Whoa. this is your boy Tony Cypher from Dope Delhi. And this is how we do it. Zara V, this is how we do it. First of all, this interested interest came from in me like when my brother brother used to listen to Slim Shady. So I I then like started think of, thinking about like why shouldn't I like I rap because I wanted to say a lot of things like spreading message. We used to go to uh, RA, then uh, Mahakali Caves. So this is all chalo bro, sab eleven till me. And this is all hip hop dude. This is all where I learned. I mean, वहाँ पे हम लोग बातचीत करके हम लोग सब start हुआ था कि वहाँ पे हम लोग बात करने के हम लोग future में क्या करेंगे. When we started rapping, rap it was the whole alien scene. ऐसे कुछ scene है ही नहीं. It was from the west. फिर भी हमने इतना कुछ बनाया. We made a whole, we constructed the whole scene around it. Previously, there was a crew in the area itself doing like talking about AKs and. Tech nines and knives. They just they stay near my building. I know, like they are from my church, so I know these guys don't do shit like this. But they still have their rap. Like they wanted to sound like Fifty Cent. Like some people want to sound like Eminem. I just wanted to be different. I just wanted to be real. So as if like the name is Dope Delic. So we are we have to face a lot of cop chase every week. We used to find a new place to smoke up. I took this whole scenario and I made this track called I Shapat Sahib Me No. So where he's asking my name. 
If he's asking where I'm from, what I was doing, then I'm giving my answers in rap. Like, my name is Tony Sebastian, me, Rai Laik, Tats Malanai, Baiko, me, Christian, Budwarila, Zato Sen, Michael. Like, like total information about me. That track went like too much viral that people, when they used to get caught, they used to sing this song to get out. Wow! A new generation of rappers showed up. And not only did they have the internet, but also a reference point in homegrown heroes. जबी मैं टेंथ पास हुआ था तभी घर पे नया कंप्यूटर आया और मेरा दोस्त है मदन उसने आके घर पे डोपर डिलिक्स करके टाइप करके हम लोगों को बताया ऐसे ऐसे रैपर है अपना धारावी में मैं तो पहले बिली भी नहीं किया मैं बोला नहीं ये लोग धारावी का नहीं है बोला जा बच्चा बच्चा नीचन दे मत मेरे को बोला चल इधर का इधर का तो फिर ऐसे एक दिन गणपति का टाइम दुनिया ना रह करना और इन लोग ना दो दिन ना परफॉर्म कर रहे थे इस पे ट्रक पे तो तभी देखा फिर बोला हाँ बा सच्ची में इधर गए तो सेम सीन मैं जब भी घर पे आया मैं बोला कि क्या क्या लिखूं ब्रो मैं क्या लिखूं फिर मैं आजू बाजू देखा तो मेरे दोस्त लोग चोरी करते हैं ब्रो नाइकी एडिडास पुमा जो भी सब तेरे को शोरूम दिखते हैं परेल में बंटा है सबसे चोरी किए ले सो आई थिंक सो दिस दिस इज व्हाट इट इज ब्रो कि ये 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 तभी वो टाइम पे टू पाक यूज टू सी लाइक आई आई सी लाइक दिस वाज एरा इन माय होल वो टाइम पे ये लॉन्ग टर्म जैसा नहीं लगा वो टाइम पे पूरा नया नया लगा और हम लोग को मतलब नया चीजें हो हम लोग भी इसमें रहेगा तो कैसा रहेगा मतलब हम लोग वो लोग का जगह पे हम लोग को इमेजिन करके देखा और मतलब वो ऐसा स्टाइल रहता ना ऐसा देखा ऐसा हाथ मिलाने का वो उनका अलग तरह का स्टाइल था तो वो सब चीज में बोला अपने को भी ये स्टाइल अडोप्ट करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि मुझे लगता है शायद ये अपने लिए बना यंग किड्स नाउ हैड सीन दे कुड बी अ पार्ट ऑफ बट दिस हैडंट ऑलवेज बीन द केस इन द सिटी Mumbai's finest, one of the oldest crews in the city, has stuck around for a while and helped show the way to these kids. बहुत सारे जन हम लोगों को पहचानते नहीं हैं और उन लोग पहचान नहीं पाते हैं क्योंकि जिस तरीके से एक दूसरे लेबल या एक कमर्शियल आर्टिस्ट को पुश मिलता है वो हम लोग को मिल नहीं पाता है. See, as I said, in the beginning when we used to do it, uh, I did not have a vision. I did not know what I was doing or where I was heading. It was basically just to be cool or to you know. be a hit amongst women and and just uh, you know to to be like uh, the the go to guy that people look up to and all that so it was something very different mumbai's finest uh, is is the first generation crews of bombay uh, divine was a part of mumbai's finest way back in the day abhi bhi bro like i i love divine song bro voice of the streets look i was raised in the gutter sunayega na बहुत सही है जब भी हम लोग हिप हॉप का शुरुआत किया था तो वो टाइम पे हम लोग एक बैटल गया था एक हिप हॉप बैटल हुआ था अंधेरी साइड में मॉल के पीछे और वही फर्स्ट टाइम था जब हम लोग ने मेरे गली में ट्रैक सुना था सुना था वहाँ पे मतलब जब भी जिस टाइम पे डिवाइन भाई चल के आया सब जन ऐसा अच्छा रिस्पेक्ट दे रहा था और इतना हाइप मिला था ना मतलब जब भी मैं फर्स्ट टाइम सुना तो मुझे तो घूस आ गया था भाई जब हमने स्टार्ट किया था दिस सीन वॉज लाइक It was such a big thing, you know. And then it moved on to a hundred thousand views. Then it moved on to a million views. And I'm talking plays is because the more the plays, the more the people it's reaching out to. What would you say identifies as Bombay rap? Mumbai's finest. <laughs> That's it, bro. It starts and ends there. Yes, Mumbai's finest. We are uh, Mumbai rap, Bombay rap combined. We are. Mumbai raps royalty. The first time when anyone used the term gully in a song was in a song called Telly Dance by Mumbai's Finest. Do that Telly Dance, do that, do that Telly Dance. Now do that gully dance, do that, do that gully dance. I hadn't heard of Divine before Mere Gully Me, but um, going back, I think his most like his breakout track would be uh, Ye Mera Bombay, and it won the Radio City Freedom Music Awards. So it got him, and it got that particular sound, a lot of visibility. But I think Nazi was very important. He was revolutionary. Just if you if you just go back and look at the YouTube comments on Afat, it was people were going nuts. He had a sort of rhythm and flow, um, and like cadence that was just very unique. जैसे रैप करना शुरू किए तो अपने देश में भी रैप चली रहे थे वो ज़्यादा मेनस्ट्रीम और लिंगी और लड़कियों के बारे में जब रिसर्च करे तो पता चला कि हिप हॉप असलियत में है क्या जहाँ भी ऐसा लगता था कि कुछ गलत हो रहा है तो वो हम अपने लिरिक्स में लेते थे That's what they provided and they put on the table. हम लोग पहले सोचा था कि ऐसा कुछ करने का बच्ची बोलने का मतलब जो लोकल स्लैंग है ना 
वो यूज करने का फिर ना हम लोग ना थोड़ा डरता था इसको लोग एक्सेप्ट करेगा क्या फिर बाद में वो सुनने के बाद नहीं अपने का जो चीज है अगर अपन अपना चीज करेगा तो I was around when the song was made. As in made, as in the very first time when I heard "Mere Gali Me," Gali 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 Me. It was an Adlib Gali Me. For me, it's uh, talking about what we are going through, what I have gone through, what uh, what we see around us, and what we feel. Divine and Nizi hit mainstream success, and audiences had a word to associate with Mumbai rap. As the scene started coming together, it also found criticism for unexpected corners. Comedy collective Tarpati Talkies created its spoof rapper Karibi, whose words were penned by EMF, an old timer in the Mumbai rap scene. Uh, what music? It's I mean poor. They're shooting fuck the Karibi. वही वही सिखाने का रहता है लोगों को हिप हॉप फास्ट फास्ट बोलता है रैप वही तो होता है फास्ट फास्ट बोलता है और सम किसी के पल्ले नहीं पड़ता है बैड बॉय बड़े बिरिडी 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 हॉप बिरिडी हॉप बिरिडी 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 सांग मजी पर चिकुटे मैं पर चिकुटे मेरी पर चिकुटे ओम भगनी भुगे ओम भगनी भुगे से दैट वन सोम भगनी भुगे वन मोर टाइम ओम भगनी भुगे वन लास्ट टाइम ओम भगनी भुगे यू नो द थिंग इज हिप हॉप हैज लाइक पीपल इन हिप हॉप इटसेल्फ हैव मेड सच अ कैरिकेचर ऑफ देमसेल्व्स देयर इज दिस मोल्ड एंड अनफॉर्चूनेटली एवरीवन इज ट्राइंग टू फिट इनटू द कुकी कटर थिंग सो इट वाज रियली इजी फॉर मी इट वाज प्रीटी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड आई वेंट टू द बारबर एंड आई शोड हिम अ फोटो ऑफ ड्रेक एंड आई एम लाइक मेरे को ये हेयर कट दे दे उसे धूप बहुत लगी है खाने को देखिए उसके मुंह पे धूप बहुत लगी है सक्सेस ऑफ द फर्स्ट सिंगल गरीबी की कहानी लेट देम टू रिकॉर्ड एन एंटायर एल्बम एंड इवन परफॉर्म द म्यूजिक लाइव वाओ सो बिजार गरीबी आई लव इट टू वो समथिंग डिफरेंट लुक अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल फकिंग गेट हैप्पी बिकॉज क्योंकि किसको डिस्केल है नाउ आई डोंट नो रे किसको डिस्केल है क्या डिस्केल है मैं वो सब ढूंढने का भी नहीं हूं मेरे आई एम नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन दिस होल कॉमेडी क्रैप सिनेरियो इट नीड्स टू एग्जिस्ट लाइक देयर इज अ स्पेस फॉर इट देन व्हाई नॉट इट्स एट द एंड ऑफ द डे द लीस्ट दैट इज डूइंग इज पुशिंग इट कॉमेडियंस आर नॉट रैपर्स मैन If you want to be a comedian, you become a comedian, right? Why fuck with our culture, especially when you are a part of it? You are just—it's plain hating, it's jealousy, man. You are jealous of someone else's success. That's why you're doing all this bullshit because you're not able to achieve it on your own. That's how I feel. Bollywood woke up to the fact that there was rap outside of like that particular yo-yo and bacha brand of Punjabi rap. First artist I heard from the Indian hip hop scene was Nazi, and I heard a track called Afat, and my editor showed it to me, and he was like, "You've seen this," and I I couldn't believe. what i was seeing and hearing and so then i started like checking him out and then i found many gali mein i think divine and easy are the first real breakout acts if i look at all the music that this was the first one that was honest this was the first thing that i heard within the genre in india that was the uh, that was speaking its truth bollywood kuch nahi kar payega agar we the artists stay true to true to themselves और ये बॉम्बे के आर्टिस्ट ही नहीं है गली रैप विल गो एवरीवेयर एवरी कॉर्नर इन द इन द कंट्री बॉलीवुड इज नॉट सिंगिंग सॉन्ग्स अबाउट द पीपल दे आर एंड हिम टेलिंग हिज स्टोरी इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु हु वांट टू बी हर्ड हु वांट टू बी रिप्रेजेंटेड एंड आई थिंक दैट्स व्हाट इट इज लाइक द फर्स्ट फोर फ्रंटर्स लाइक मी एंड सम सम ऑफ द अदर गाइस हमने सिर्फ स्पार्क किया और ये फायर होना बाकी है अब तक और उसको देना नहीं चाहिए फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ये गली वर्ड ऑफ फेमस हुआ बिकॉज ऑफ मेरे गली में करेक्ट आई वॉज रैपिंग इन द गली देना खेम आउट देर अ होल डिफरेंट वर्ल्ड हाँ एक दूसरा दुनिया ही है जो वो लोग ने देखा नहीं है इस बिकॉज दे डिन नो कि इसमें करियर बन सकता है इससे पैसे आ सकते हैं इससे तुम एक तुम्हारे घर पे पैसे ला सकते हो दे डोंट नो अबाउट दिस वैन दे नो अबाउट दिस दे कम आउट एंड अंडरस्टैंड दैट इज नॉट अबाउट द गली ठीक है 
Wow, okay. So he, I might, the question I want to start off with okay. for you is uh, a prediction. Wow, the first comment says first we get Bollywood, now we get Bollywood. <laughs> uh, it's an inter interesting phrase that I feel like could easily be coined and used almost like the Big Bang Theory. Right, or, yeah. Or anything else, where it starts off as a joke or an insult and then it becomes yeah. like iconic and ubiquitous. But the question I have for you is, do you think that, I mean, you're already seeing the infancy of it, which is Bollywood is splintering, right? You have that very old school type of Bollywood and that new school yeah. type of Bollywood, and then they try to do hybrids sometimes, but I feel like that you, you're getting this sort of, I guess, diversity for lack of a better word, and I feel like you're gonna have another leg, another branch in this tree, which is, the, you know, the hip hop scene, because Gully Boy is like, outside of Gully Boy, how many hip hop related films have we seen, or how many films have we seen from India that have hip hop embedded as, as a huge fundamental part of its soundtrack? Because I can't think of any other ones. I know it's there, but I can't think of any other ones. Like, I mean, in a lot of the South Indian films we've watched, they've had a sort of hip hop y sounding. It still has that sort stuff. of rock sound, though. But yeah, it's, it's not. It's not this. This is very which I don't mind, by the way. I, I really like the South Indian rock music. I actually really, really enjoy from what I've heard from like what I've like little things here and there. The yeah. first time I noticed it was with uh, the Rajnikanth film. I forgot the name of it, but it's like the first trailer of his that I saw, and like that just sound, that visceral rock slash sort of hip hop sound. I, I fell in love with it right away, and I think it's awesome. And so I think that sort of hybrid sound is probably much more appealing to me personally. Just like, you know, just putting that out there, I love that sound a lot. I just think it's it's evolution. It's just gonna evolve, right? I mean, you saw it here very much the same way where when hip hop and rap came out, what was it, like the 70s or like, 80s, whatever, like late it was 70s, early late 70s, 80s. early 80s. That yeah. was kind of where it was really coming out, and it was an expression of how people were feeling about the way they were treated and their lives. And then eventually, it just got bigger and bigger, and it just grew and grew. And I feel like that's so, 79. Yeah, that's I feel like that's gonna be kind of what happens in in India as well. And like, I've always enjoyed hip hop and been fascinated by its roots and, and the music and stuff. I mean, I feel like now in the West, it's, it's definitely become way commercialized and that's probably something that can and very well may happen with the Indian hip hop scene as people start to That's realize, what I thought was gonna happen yeah, based on what he was saying. They're you know? making money, you know? And so like, we're gonna have more Drakes or whatever, you know, and and that's fine But I've always really been fascinated at this notion of hip-hop being a vehicle for expressing What's kind of eating at you inside mm -hmm. and, and like having a social message and but being told in such a way that is Creative and fun and interesting to listen to, you know, you know for some reason I've said this before uh, many times because one thing that the uh, comedian uh, rappers were saying was that there is this sort of uh, repetitious sound. Yeah, like they th they find it repetitious and that's why they're making fun of it like they don't think fondly of it, even though they're profiting off of it in a very, very powerful way. For some reason, for me, Indian hip hop and Spanish hip hop is more appealing to my ear than American hip hop, mm -hmm. on average. I don't know why that is. The first time I heard everything from Gully Boy, I was just like, wow, all of that sounds amazing. I love that movie, and you know? I love the music in that movie. Yeah, even the stuff here, like them just spitting random tracks, I thought all that stuff sounded super cool. Well, I think also because us not knowing the the language exactly, we're really listening to the, sound. the beat and the sound. Yeah. And, and, and that's what a lot of hip hop is because with the the comedy duo when they were doing one of their songs, I actually really liked it, purely because it had sound. it had a cool beat and yeah. I know it was nonsense or whatever, but I was like, yeah, that sounds cool to me, and I think that's kind of what they're they're like hitting on, which profiting is, off of. Yeah, yeah, listen to this repetitious sound and blah blah blah. But it's like they say, you know, you know you've made it 
when you've got haters. What's what's always been sort of difficult for me to reconcile with, and I think I'm finally coming around to it, is that because hip hop, the sound, the underlying track is repetitious. There isn't yeah. a lot to it. The in lieu of having actual instruments, because often hip hop is born out of like not having much, necessity, right? Yeah. Necessity. It's like your mouth is the instrument. Exactly. That, that is the the rhythm and whatever. And like you're the vessel yeah. for your art, right, right there. I think it's amazing. Right. I still take issue with the underlying soundtrack of a lot of hip hop songs in general. Like that's why I'm more drawn to rock. I sort of feel. Frustrated that I missed out on that metal and rock scene and that <laughs> punk rock, you know, scene in India because I'm like that's the stuff that I would have probably really, really enjoyed right. a lot. That's not to say I don't enjoy the hip hop scene in India. I enjoy I'm enjoying the hip hop that I hear just randomly out of India than I do randomly off of my own radio station for the local music playing. We've listened to a bit of Divine, at least one on the on the uh, Patreon, but. Um, what I heard here too, what I really like is just that it seems that he's being very genuine and I think that's the most important thing is especially in something like hip-hop or rap but I think in any art when you're fully expressing yourself and fully expressing who you are as a person and sharing your experiences I think it really connects to people and I think that's what this is doing and, and that's why it's kind of exploded so much because it's giving people, you know, like from the gully or whatever, like it's giving them a voice and it's kind of showing them, hey, I could do this too. It's something to join join in with, but saying that, you don't want to just be copying everyone. Copying is a good place to start, you yeah. know, because you can learn from imitating, but eventually you can, you're going to have to find your own voice. I've never ever been a fan of the apparel. As a kid, maybe I was, and I used to try to imitate it, but as an adult, I'm like, this is gross. And when Thai people started like trying to imitate the Hispanic gangster Cholos. culture, the yeah. Cholo culture, I'm like, why? Why? It's, it's like- Because I think it looks cool, you know? It brings you together yeah. and it separates you from other people. No, sure. Well, it's a, it, be it becomes its own uniform. And yeah. I'm like, that, but that, uh, I don't know. I, I was I was really impressed when uh, Matizia Hu came out and he's just dressed like a, a rabbi and he's <laughs> spitting like Rastafarian sounding lyrics. I thought that was amazing. I think that's so cool as well about, you know, music styles like this or even reggae or whatever. The soul of it speaks to you and if it speaks to you, then join in and express yourself. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I love that hip hop and you know, all other types of music like that have transcended where they're from and impacted other people in no, other I, countries. No, I do appreciate the the infancy element, uh, which is like where it comes from and people feeling like they've got like a beacon of hope of where yeah. I, I can go that direction, I can express myself, and then they actually go for it. And I think that's really cool. One of the things Zoya Akhtar pointed out was that like, the Bollywood music wasn't for these people. It's not speaking to yeah. the general population of people like there you have these people who are just like living in these gullies and they that doesn't mean anything to them yeah. it's this sort of aloof a very aspirational you know, yeah. type of feel but it, they're so disconnected from it yeah. right whereas the, the the reason why the the gully music spreads like a <laughs> I say that funny uh, laughing because of don't say the V word. The climate. Or maybe you have to bleep that word out. But the reason it's, it goes viral, there you go. That, there you we can go. Say that, okay. The reason it goes viral is be, is because of the identification with it. Right. You know, you, ide you identify with that and you're like, oh my God, that speaks to, and then yeah. you spread that around. I like that a lot. What I don't like is when it goes commercial. When, it, when you get to this point where you got nothing left to say, so now you're just saying stuff. And it's just commercial. Keep that machine moving. Keep keep the. I, I know you, you well, gotta do what I, you gotta do to exactly. to, to, you know, to feed to, to pay the rent. I get it. And to you know feed yourself. I understand. And your family, yeah. But that you gotta go in search of something to talk about then. Well, that's true. But I think a lot of the time when when you get record labels involved, I always notice this with a lot of my favorite artists. Usually, their first album is. Phenomenal. Why? Because they've had years and years of life and experience and struggle and whatever to put into their music and it really comes through and it connects with you on like a soul level. Yeah. And then they get a huge success, the label goes, you need to do something right now, right now. And they have no experience because what have they been doing? They've been touring, they've been making music videos, that's all they know right now. Yeah. So then they're just making up stuff just to fill out the second album. And usually the second album is crap in yeah. comparison to the first one. But they just aren't given the luxury of time to right. be like, hey, take some time and 
make some new music, you know? What, one of the things I appreciate, I mean, this is all based on subtitles, obviously. One of the things I appreciate is that there's not a prolific use of uh, profanity? profanity in it. It's so funny to me what is inspiring, you know, hip hop scenes around the world, because the music over here is it's just so much profanity that when you try to play it on the radio, they, they either have to create an alternate version or mm -hmm. they have to keep bleeping it out, which is like, that's not even listenable. I don't know why people... So I just enjoy that they're actually speaking something as opposed to just, uh, you know, unlike the comedic group, uh, un uh, as opposed to just making noise or just using profanity to fill in. There's like not a lot of filler words yeah. that the subtitles are indicating is what I'm trying to say. I got excited when you said subtitles because I, I wanted to remember to point out that I thought that they did a really great job with the subtitles too because I noticed that they were trying really hard to rhyme and still kind of make it work in yeah. subtitles and like... Kudos to the subtitle, whoever did that. For, oh yeah, I thought, for taking the effort to kind of I mean, make it make sense. Obviously, we way. don't we don't speak whatever they're speaking, but like I think the subtitles were re really good because yeah. it felt like it's still connected with the essence of whatever they were trying to communicate, which exactly. is what's most important. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, you guys, hopefully you enjoyed that reaction. Please do let us know your feelings in yeah. the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that uh, bell icon to get notified every time we drop another video. Make sure you hit all notifications. And if you're enjoying Vice's videos, because we've done a, a couple of reactions to them, to their stuff so far, uh, make sure to go over to their channel and, and subscribe to their content as well. And check out the chart, Kirk, social media, all that good stuff. Jabby Kway, same deal. Subscribe if you haven't already. I said that. I don't know why I'm saying it again. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.